everybody, Aaron at Otter Creek Farm here. Wanted to uh, just give a quick update. It's been a while since I've done a video. Uh, wanted to uh, let you know, hey, we got the shipping container in. Uh, that process went fairly smooth and then uh, built a dirt ramp to, uh, to get into the container. Uh, started out with steps and realized that's pretty inconvenient to get started. Then plus trying to get a four-wheeler in there all the time on the, uh, on the ramp was pretty inconvenient. So I opted to work with railroad ties and the reason for doing that was one is they're relatively inexpensive about $25 a pop uh, you can often find them for free uh, if they're tearing up a railroad in your area number two is you can manage them uh, if you're just one person you got to pick up one end at a time and move them around but you can move them yourself uh, the grapple on the tractor or a chain on the on the tractor is another way of moving them around quite easily you can cut them with a the chainsaw to size which is great so you can kind of shape things the way you want with railroad ties um, so instead of actually showing you the work on uh, you know me building the ramp I just wanted to point out some of the things that I did and some of my lessons learned uh, one of the things that I'm realizing in, in kind of doing this uh, hunt camp setup is that working with rebar is really a great opportunity um, you know I've got a little light duty welder and uh, I work with 5 8 inch rebar. A, it's relatively inexpensive. B, it's strong and it's going to last a long time. And instead of buying bolts and things like that, uh, I picked up a 10 foot section of rebar for I think it was 10, 12 bucks at you know the uh, Home Depot. So uh, I then uh, I got a metal saw, used some points on Amazon, and got a, a dedicated metal saw. I tried to use my uh, compound uh, miter saw, but it's got some plastic parts. And after a while, if you're using a cutting wheel on there, those parts actually can get quite hot. The rebar is glowing red hot if you don't let it cool down in between, uh, you know, trying to cut through it. And uh, those types of saws, you'll, you know, uh, damage more or less. Uh, they're just not built for that. So I got a dedicated metal saw, all metal, metal deck, metal guards, metal everything, and um, 14 inch blade on there. So I got a good size one. And then I actually got a diamond blade on Amazon for $100. So uh, I think I'm you know, really set up to move to the next level of working with the rebar. And what I do, uh, especially in this situation, is I cut the rebar into lengths and I use them to pin the railroad ties together and I've got a half inch bit drill a small drill or battery drill will not cut through these they are hard and tough um, I've got a big 14 inch drill bit and you know you just gotta work it in there with a big drill and it takes some time uh, if you get a drill bit make sure it has two cutting edges uh, they're you know 20 bucks on Harbor Freight uh, for one bit or you know there's a three pack for 20 bucks but it only has one cutting blade so it doesn't last as long and it doesn't cut as fast so get the $20 bit and save yourself some uh, some work while you're trying to do this so uh, let me uh, take the camera off the tripod and actually walk you over and point out a couple things about what I learned in putting these things together and I've got a little bit more work to do today because uh, I'm going to add paver stones to the dirt ramp, which was always the plan. So I left the dirt a little bit low, been waiting for that dirt to settle and compact, and then get it level, and then add these uh, you know, four inch high paver stones, so I've got a nice consistent deck going up in there. It also reduces the amount of dirt that you take into the trailer because it's, you know, it's consistent uh, when it gets caught in your shoes. Um, so uh, I'm going to use some rebar to do a couple extra things and I'll point those out over there as we talk about some of the lessons that I learned, some of the things I did as I did this for the first time and I'm sure you'll make it better, but uh, this will give you a starting point if you want to do this type of design with your uh, shipping container. So let's, uh, let's take a closer look. All right, you'll see that I did the simplest design where I simply have three ties going out three ties on the end uh, it's the easiest to construct and it uh, doesn't require any carpentry skills really i did taper the ends uh, a little bit a i wanted some steps because you're always coming around the corners and stepping up on there so i wanted some extra timbers for steps also it just makes it look a little bit better as the you know the, the grade comes off of the uh 
the ramp there. So uh, getting started, this is where you want to start. You want to get your timbers here aligned first and get them parallel to the bottom. Now, if your container's level, then obviously it makes sense that your timbers should just be level. However, if your container's not level, and you level your railroad ties, then visually it looks wrong. So you want to have the railroad ties parallel this gap here. And we did an adjustment uh, last week, and I can see that this end is now higher than that end, but I'll probably make an adjustment with some dirt over there to raise the, the paver stones a little bit and compensate. Uh, I really thought this end would just settle another inch or so, but it's not. Um, so when you're doing this, you've got to be thinking about how am I going to pin this using rebar pins to, you know, hold everything together so it doesn't squish out the sides or push out that way. Um, so uh, on the bottom course, what I did was uh, I put rebar through the bottom course and sunk it two feet into the ground. Uh, just drilled all the way through, you know, use a sledgehammer and pound it through. Uh, on the next course, I used uh, two pins and I put those pins into the bottom uh, tie, and I did the same for the top, two pins going into that tie. So they're all three tied together. The other thing that I did was I took a piece of rebar, and right here you can see uh, the end cap, and I ran a piece of rebar through this one, across, and through the other one on the other side, and then welded a, a little piece on both ends. And that's going to play a significant role over the long haul to keep the two ends from splaying out as the downward pressure applies. Uh, once this gets rained on, it's gonna get a lot heavier too, and there's gonna be more, even more downward pressure. So uh, that's kind of a key uh, step in this process. Uh, you may wanna do it on the bottom one. You can't do it on the top one because it's too close to the surface, um, unless you put it really low on the tie and then brought the dirt way up, you know, that type of thing. But uh, having at least one of those there is gonna keep your sides from uh, tilting but also splaying out to the sides. So that's uh, one key thing to pay attention to. The next thing is obviously doing the same type of pinning that you have here. There's a lot of force to push that uh, towards the trailer. So uh, what I decided to do was get pieces of rebar like we have here. And I cut that two feet longer than the, the, the height that is needed. Uh, to hold this up and then I drove that rebar down into the ground until I got it to the right height and now I have it positioned here where I tack welded it and then I screwed up and then uh, got the tip stuck so I had to back off then I didn't have more tips so I had to leave this with just the tack weld but it actually held and then I have the other one over there which is uh, ready to be welded and then what I'm doing with this piece is I'm going to weld it from here to there so as I put the uh, this, the pavers up against it, the pavers won't want to push through, but I can also see right now there's not actually not enough room for them to push through. Uh, it will provide some additional stability. Uh, maybe it's not going to be needed now that I look at it, but another thing to possibly do is to uh, weld the piece here and then, you know, another piece out there and then put a piece along the side. Probably not the best idea just because it's probably a trip hazard as you're trying to come over the top, but something to consider as you design your layout. Uh, the other thing that's important is down here, I put pins going from here to there. And that's, again, to keep this wall from tilting on the high end out. And I angled those pins, A, because that's what, that's what I was able to do with the drill. But also with that pin being like this, that pin, uh, it would really have to completely bend to, to allow this wall to tilt out. And I did it in the top course because it's more likely to lean out from the top so um, you know there are some ideas for you if you're curious uh, I use railroad ties for the shipping container stand as well and what I did was uh, cut one in half it made a horizontal piece and then I used two to stack on top and then I uh, used a block underneath that to get the proper height now um, what I would recommend is actually what I did on the other end, which was I would move this block and I put three of them underneath there, one on each end and one in the middle, and then move the railroad tie up to direct contact with this. That keeps your railroad tie out of the soil. And uh, I actually hope to one day come back and, you know, get the tractor underneath this and lift this side a little bit and correct that. But these railroad ties last 
forever and honestly i'll probably die before uh before those railroad ties need to be replaced so you know that's the uh the idea with the ramp and uh getting you know those paver stones then maybe transitioning to a thinner paver stone that might be a little less expensive i think those paver stones are two dollars each at uh at lowe's you know home depot is going to be the same rural king wherever um so they're not very expensive probably going to take 30 40 of them to really kind of build that patio up there and then slope it into some dirt down here so um you know that's how i built the shipping uh container ramp i hope it provides some ideas for you and uh good luck with your project